what's up guys so today we're gonna make 30 candles and um what we got here now is we got our wax over here coconut coconut mixed with soy wax over here so this wax come into a block you, you're gonna break it up in small pieces so it's easier to melt so what we're gonna use and melt this wax is, is the buffalo kettle so at the moment we're getting it heated up and then we're gonna put our wax inside and get it to the temperature of 180 degree Fahrenheit so we got our lovely reliable thermostat here this is the best one for the buffalo kettle so what we're gonna do now is add our wax to the buffalo kettle now as you can see we loaded the wax to our buffalo kettle so now we're just gonna leave this to melt what I'm going to do is leave it on 10 the settings temperature 10 and then I will use my thermometer and check the temperature later but for now we just need to get it melt and the next thing we won't be using the cover because if you use the cover the evaporation from the from the water gonna cause condensation and then you're gonna drip and go back inside your wax which will cause bubbles in your wax okay so we won't be using the cover we're just gonna leave it just like that to melt so that's four pint 4.16 kilo of wax and it's gonna take at least four to five minutes or more it all depends what settings you use but what I'm gonna do is leave it at number 10 once I reach 180 Fahrenheit I will just leave it at settings number 5 which for me you keep it moderate and keep it at 180 to 170 and I can always turn to, to temperature number 6 and then you keep moderate so now guys as you can see the wax has reached 180 Fahrenheit so what I will do now is go and so what I will do now is go and reduce to number 6 and number 5 so I find number 5 and number 6 to keep the, that keep the heat constant at 180 so what I'm going to do now is put my jar right here I'm going to use my ladle and I'm going to pour out as much wax I need for five candles and after I do that I will then add my fragrance oil so once I add the wax to my jar it will be like 180 Fahrenheit so I will add my fragrance oil at 170 and then I will stir it and then I will pour anyway from 150 to 160 okay guys so this is the whole setup just to show you guys yeah so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead now and pour up my wax okay so now we got our 30 jars right here and we're gonna wick our jars now meanwhile our wax melt so this is how we're gonna wick our jar we're gonna take one of the wick what I normally use is just a pen an empty pen remove the inside bit so I can slide my wick inside so now we've got our jar and we're gonna center the wick in the jar so what I normally do is take my finger put in the center right here then I turn it around I look inside and just aim the wick where my finger is it does take a bit of time but once you start doing it often you get really used to it so as you can see in the center and what we're gonna do we're gonna do this for the rest of the 29 jars as well so now guys we've got all our jars all wicked up so what we're gonna do now now our next step is to keep the wick straight as possible so what we're going to use is a, a close pick or a peg and we're going to use it i'm going to show you guys how to do it so you center your wick put your close pin in and then you pull your wick keep a bit of tension on it and push down your pin as possible and make sure so, so now it's sturdy as possible and this is how we're going to do it to keep it centered so as you can see we have all our jars all prepared now so, so yes guys um these are our candles and um i just separate different fragrances so one two three four so that's four different fragrances as you can see i got my econ right here as well because some of the tops i did have to put the econ over them so now we got nice tops there's still some of them with few imperfection after i use the econ twice so but most of them is really lovely after using the heat gun some of them i didn't have to use the heat gun so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna give these a clean on the jars you can see 
some little spillage on the jars and stuff so i'm going to give each of these individually a clean i'm going to trim the wicks and then i'm going to label them then i'm going to do the clp as well all right as you can see guys i'm printing my own labels as well so the reason why i do this is to save as much money as possible and then i can test different design whenever i feel like instead of sending the design to avery and waiting for them to post it to me you know so if you can print your own labels then go for it you know it's really cheaper and easier for you and you got the more flexibility where you can just test a new design change something whenever you feel like so once you have a printer maybe i would say get a laser printer buy the label size you need design it on canva you don't have to use adobe illustrator the only reason why i use adobe illustrator is is just because i'm comfortable with it and i start using adobe illustrator before i even found out about canva and if i was to start this process all over i would definitely use canva instead of adobe illustrator so what you need to get is just get yourself a laser printer or an inkjet printer and your blank labels and canva you, canva is free you don't need to pay to, to make your labels so you can still use the free version to make nice labels so you can save lots of money designing your own labels and printing them yourself and not only saving money as i said before you got the flexibility you can try whatever idea come to your mind So yes guys now this is our candles so what i'm going to do i'm going to do the clp next and um i'm going to do that in our next video okay